This video is about NEXRAD weather control and accidental geoengineering. Um, just recently I had, you know, an experience with one of my previous trolls on uh, Facebook. Uh, come right back to front and center. So I deleted my Facebook and everything, shut it down, and the day I get back, I have this Raphael O'Neill chick claiming that she, you know, takes credit for me going AWOL. <laughs> um, and of course, you know, to which I respond, you have no power over me. Uh, but regardless, you know, she's formally challenging me to explain next rads and why I don't talk about it. So let's address that front and center because you know I've been talking about next rads for quite some time I put it in the details down here you know the articles that I've written in the past but let's do a little history lesson for those who don't know back in November of 2012 on my original blog which was resonated.net it's still there it's r3znad.wordpress.com now. I no longer have the URL associated with it. But I wrote an article called Geoengineering Frankenstorm, Hurricane Sandy and the Air Force Weather Weapon System, Part 1 and Part 2. Now, I'm not going to go through both of these because they're so long they needed two parts. So that should be a clue for you. Um, but generally speaking, the first one... I went through, you know, the history of weather control, hurricane control. That's Hurricane Hugo. I went through that bad boy. It was nasty. It destroyed my hometown of Sumter, South Carolina. The eye passed over my house. Um, it was no fun. And at the time, you know, I didn't know anything about weather modification. I was only like 14, 15 years old. Um, but regardless, there was Project Storm Fury. I put a little bit in there about Ben Livingston, you know, and the Hurricane Modification Workshop. You can check all that stuff out. How the Department of Homeland Security got involved. These videos are still available on climate, on my uh, Climate Viewer YouTube um, page. But, you know, all of the, the stuff related to HAMP, the Hurricane Aerosol Microphysics Program, and a whole bunch more videos and links to the stuff about the Department of Homeland Security and NASA um, gearing up for steering hurricanes. And, uh, you know, all those details are in there. Some of that's still over on climateviewer.com. In fact, uh, if you come down to the bottom of any page, I believe it'll be right about here. And we'll just bring that up real quick. Um, this is the actual hurricane hacking um, Department of Homeland Security enters the weather modification business. And, you know, that was a big deal then. Okay, so regardless, I went through all that and, you know, some stuff from the Air Force 2025. And a lot of it had to do with not next rads, but, you know, steering hurricanes with microwaves from space. Solar powered high energy laser system. Um, solar energy optical weapon, space-based high-energy laser system, space-based high-powered microwave system, hybrid high-energy laser system. Yeah, I read the entire 2025 series. So then I came across this ar article from 2010, Steering Hurricanes, Satellites Heat the Cloud Tops by Beaming Microwaves from Space. The damage done to New Orleans in 2005 has spurred two rival teams of climate experts in America and Israel to redouble their efforts to enable people to play God with the weather. Mm -hmm. And I have this patent here, weather modification by artificial satellites, which, you know, backs that whole thing up. Um, you know, energy beam characteristics in space, desired weather condition assignments by energy beams. So really, the, the gist of what I've got here on just the very first part is that if you're talking about steering a hurricane, the kind of power required, next reds, generally speaking, don't have that. 
but solar powered satellites do first first and foremost um and you know i've got a whole lot of information on that and some more information on um on the solar powered uh, satellites i approached the united nations committee on disarmament on this project but was told that as long as the program was called solar energy by the united states it could not be considered a weapons project talking about solar powered satellites and then on to page two part two of this um raytheon was at the weather modification association annual meeting in 2005 and they have this paper where they basically talk about how they want to further um, weather modification capabilities and you know that the knowledge base is not large enough to reliably support tornado zapping or hurricane snuffing efforts but one day uh, support for these efforts may be appropriately funded yada 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 program customers Farmers, crop insurance industry, water district managers, utility, utility industry, relevant organizations, the Weather Modification Association, Environment and Water Resources Institute, scientific community, the government agencies, NOAA, the EPA, NASA, the Department of Defense, and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Anticipated sources of funding, Farmer groups, insurance industry, water districts, utility districts, state governments, NOAA, Congress, and others. And at the end of this paper, they thank Raytheon um, for supporting this future progress. Well, anyway, um, connecting the dots, Raytheon, AMS, Lockheed, HARP, NOAA, General Dynamics, and DARPA dots. And uh, apparently... Back in 2012, I put in there, sold its weather reporting, um, the NOAA sold its weather reporting functionality to Raytheon. You can actually see a video where I interviewed Raytheon at the latest weather modification conference, and they confirmed that. So everything you see on, um, you just go here to uh, climateviewer.com. Scroll to the very bottom and go to AMS 2018 right here. And you can see all of those videos. And right here, uh, Raytheon, Sensor, and AWIPS. Uh, they tell you right at the end of the video when I'm interviewing them exactly that. You see that all of the data on weather.gov is created from Raytheon's AWIPS to all of the created products are on there. All of them. So like all of our, all of our weather information that you see from your local forecasters that is provided to NOAA comes through a Raytheon product. Um, but I was talking about this back in 2012. Um, and this was all about, you know, the global weather network, global weather control, and how they would, you know, use um, microwaves to do this. So, anyway, um, weather analysis and modification system. This is also from Air Force 2025. But I got this paper about the Air Force weather weapon system. And you can see it right here. And it talks about how all of this comes together for the Air Force. And they had this thing called the Joint Environmental Toolkit, which was, guess what? Google Earth. At the time, Climate Viewer 3D, um, my beautiful globe, uh, was Google Earth as well. So what I was doing was basically providing the same tools that Raytheon was giving um, to the government to the people for free. Yay! Um, and theirs was called the Joint Environmental Toolkit. But, of course, Google Earth got shut down. So, you know, more on that in just a second. So, regardless, what, what does all this have to do with NEXRAD at all? Because I'm talking about atmospheric heating as a research tool. Bernard Eastland, he had a video. This is on my YouTube as well. Where they had this thing called the Thunderstorm Solar Powered Satellite. And they were talking about microwave beams from space 
cooking the part of a thunderstorm or a tornado to shut it down or steer it. So, um, you know, that's, that's just the real of this, you know, scientific issues with tornadoes and how to heat them up with microwave beams. That was Bernard Eastland, inventor of harp technology. So, then they had the Weather Modification Test Technology Symposium where Dr. Arnold Barnes from the Phillips Lab um, you know, went on to say, hey, we can use things like HARP and cloud seeding with carbon black to steer hurricanes, yada yada. But the proof comes in down here at the bottom where we actually caught them screwing with Hurricane Sandy. And this was the only next rad dat data that, you know, was, was it next rad? Or was it beams from space? Or was it beams from an ionospheric heater like the one in Puerto Rico? But as you can see in the image right here, um, we'll bring that up to full screen so you guys can see it. There's something funky going on right here with Hurricane Sandy. And there, you can see the microwave beams coming in from the bottom. Of course, you know the debunkers will say, oh, those are just graphical anomalies. Nothing to see here. Um, but you know, I'm reminding you guys, this bit, this image is from 2011, November or 2012, November. So been talking about this long, long time. Me and Dutch since went round and round about it. Dutch helped me out with this article. In fact, this image right here, I got from him. Um, and then the, the, the next red station in North Carolina was seen flashing um hurricane sandy as it was coming in and we actually saw that over on dupage as well showing some really funky returns so this is a question for a lot of people you know they they see these returns they wonder what the hell is going on there um it's really creepy then i got this one right here and you can see this is october 27 2012 what the heck is that this big old beam coming into Hurricane Sandy as it's traveling up the coast. And you can see it's starting to pull itself away from South Carolina and it starts heading its way up to New York. Um, and, you know, more radar flashes along the way, different images from um, DePage's next gen, a lot of deleted videos, you know how YouTube is. And that's a photo I actually took, and this is the satellite photo of Hurricane Sandy. This is where I live. So in this strip right here, this is what the chemtrails look like. It was pretty crazy. It had nice ice clouds and sun dogs. There's my, my, you know, I took this with my camera. Um, and it was pretty interesting. Okay. So some people made, you know, Obama's October surprise creating and steering Hurricane Sandy and people made claims that the SBX was involved in, you know, this. Um, and that's what the SBX looks like. And then there's, you know, the uh, drone that we have that uh, they fly up in space. It could be loaded with microwave, you know, beams. Who knows? You know, that's that was basically, they had a website called harpstatus.com back then, if you guys weren't. Um, following in this as far back as I've been, but harp status was like this whole area is being microwaved. Um, you know, lots of lots of interesting stuff. But most people don't know about this ionospheric heater in Arecibo, Puerto Rico, which kind of lines up with the microwave beams that we were seeing because saying you know most of the hurricanes coming up towards the east coast they pass by Puerto Rico, and Sure enough, they've got a big old freaking microwave ionospheric heater there now in that dome. Um, you can see that on climateviewer.org as well. So anyway, this is just like in the past. So I just recently brought this up again. Um, our next reds radar is steering Hurricane Florence because of this image right here. So I was over on Climate Viewer 3D and this is what I saw. This was the path of Hurricane Florence, and it passes right over the first next rad station, passes over my house, <laughs> and then makes a right turn at the next rad station in Columbia, and then comes up here and makes another next uh, right hand turn between two next rad stations. At the end of the day, it's kind of like, you know, 
there's there's really no proof in this. I mean, this is all fun to talk about with the next rads, but it's kind of like throwing a stick in the woods. You know what I mean? Um, if you throw a stick in the woods, you're, you're probably going to hit a tree. And if you, you know, if you line up the hurricane pass with, you know, how many next rad stations there are, I mean, look at how many there are. You're probably going to hit a couple along the way. At the same time, there's, there's really nothing I've been able to say definitively proof next rad can steer a hurricane. What I have found, however, is that there is this thing called searchlight mode. And it's, it's you know, kind of weird the way it's worded here, but basically they're saying during a five minute period of searchlight mode, the WSR 88D, that's Weather Service Radi Radar 88, 1988 is when it was made. That's what a next rad's actually called, a WSR 88 unit with a negative 0.5 degree beam elevation will generate a maximum average power density averaged over six minutes in the main beam of 3.8 milliwatt per centimeter squared within 800 feet of the antenna. The power density will not exceed the IEE 1991 guidelines for controlled environments of 9 to 10 megawatts per centimeter squared. For comparison, the IEE 1991 guidelines for uncontrolled environments, a 30-minute averaging period is required. If multiple 5-minute periods of searchlight mode operation occur during a 30-minute period, the guidelines for uncontrolled environments would could be exceeded. To prevent that hazard, the use of searchlight mode operation will be limited to one 5-minute period per 30 minutes and a safety plan to minimize human exposure will be prepared and implemented for searchlight mode operation. So, whenever we're seeing these, you know, what appear to be beams in a fixed location, um, you know, they're, they're not actually, let's just say, you see them on the radar and they're basically in a stuck location you know what i mean like people have they talk about them all the times they call them next rad beams radar beams or whatever um there there's another article i did and this is april of 2012 the doppler effect our radar is affecting the weather and that's where i go through all of these different you know things um, this was my original map of all the Doppler radar stations because the next rads are not the only Doppler radar stations. There's also the joint surveillance systems. They're FAA long range radars. They're in red and terminal Doppler weather radar. They're yellow. So, and then the blue ones are ocean, um, integrated ocean observing system, IOS, uh, radars. So there's a bunch of Doppler radars and you can see right here that, the next rads are 750 kilowatts versus the terminal Doppler weather radars of 250 kilowatts. So, you know, lots of power in these things. Um, but do we, how do you prove it? You know what I mean? That's what we're talking about here. Can you prove it? So we see lots of frequency stuff. I got a whole bunch of stuff on how the beams work and, you know, what they call a pencil beam. Or um, they have different modes, clear air mode precipitation mode and um, then they have like another one that's like called test mode so um, anyway I got a whole lot of stuff on beam steering and propagation and how it all affects everything and ducting and how all the you know the very this is a very very technical document that I wrote so but at the very end of it here I've got what you call the pencil beam and this is what you might call searchlight mode or pencil beam and some of these are radar returns that are accidental. Um, that some of these are interference. Some of these occur when the radar is pointed directly at the sun and they show up like this. But could they be the infamous searchlight mode? And if likely, uh, this is what a pencil beam looks like, that would mean that they could do heating in a location. You can see one there. Um, lots of examples of pencil beams just spurious radar emissions. 
these are a concern for a lot of people. And I can't say for certain that any of this is, there's one where it's just blotted out. You know, these are the different types of weird radar returns that have been seen over the day, over the, <laughs> back in the day. Um, wow, that's funky, right? So that was kind of my point in Dutch sense. He was finding ones like these where they're square and they're just, there's a freaking square and it's missing, you know? I mean, so people have a lot of questions about it. And this has been one of those, you know, um, needle in a haystack kind of things. Because on the one hand, they really don't have the power um, to do it. But, you know, column waves, scalar waves, um, there may be more to it than meets the eye. Um, but I'm not willing to go on record, at least, and say that Doppler radars are steering hurricanes. Hurricanes are the most powerful, you know, nature um, event, period. And that's why I kind of leave the subject alone. Um, nonetheless, you know, I it's always been a fascination of mine. It's something I will continue to look into. Um, but there's no proof to it. You know, the, the proof is that um, the power required and the intent to do so is, you know, all, let's say, from space. That's as Trump would say, that's where it's at <laughs> with this space force thing. So if you're looking to steer a hurricane, you either do that with dumping a whole lot of carbon black dust into it. So it, um, there are many discussions about that over the ages and obviously microwaving it from space using solar powered satellites would be my guess. So, um, the only way to catch somebody in the act of doing either would be with proper sensors and there just isn't a lot of information out there. I mean, we have the microwave image stuff from Mimic. Um, you're not going to be able to get any aerosol samples um, from something out in the middle of the ocean. So it's a tough one. Um, but regardless, you know, I've, I've updated my next red map. It's been kind of the same since 2013 when I first created it. And now uh, you can go to any next red station and get not only the radar animation, so you can click on that, it'll take you straight to the actual animation page. You can click on say like 48 right here and animate it. Pretty cool, I've been meaning to do this forever. So, of course I'm streaming live so my internet's gonna be a little slower and watch it act stupid. Or I, I pick a bad one. God, you gotta love being live. But regardless, um, that's how you do that. You pop up the, the radar animation. Let me pick a different one. Go, go, Columbia radar animation. Now the COD page doesn't even want to work. Work for me. Do it. Fun times. But regardless, we'll give that a moment to load. And each station has its next rad da um, station data on it. This is something called level three data. And I put this up here so that people can, if you really want to dig into this and you really want to know what the hell is going on with your next rad station, this is how you actually get to the full data, not what you're seeing on um, the news. And what you do is you say, like, put in the dates. We're going to go 10, 29. 2018 and then you choose the product you want so you got level 2 which is the base data which you can see over here on climate viewer 3d live so you just come over here and we'll go to weather alerts we'll go to rain and snow and then we'll scroll down to next rad and I got base reflectivity right there and I've got the other one right here but these are level 2 products you can actually see the next rad radar you know information live um, as it's happening, zoom in, it'll refine itself, get sharper. But regardless, um, this is the base reflectivity and then the other one is the filtered version that you get on the news. So I'm gonna show you the difference between the two real quick, just so you can see. If you look at it like this, this is what the news will show you. 
see the difference and then this is with the base reflectivity so I'm gonna turn this one down a little bit and bring this up big difference right so there's a difference between the filtered and unfiltered as you can see all this stuff here gone so this is what you see on the news okay this is what the base reflectivity is showing and we've got pencil beams everywhere so don't always believe you know everything you're seeing on the news because like I said it's run through a Raytheon product and it's filtered um, and you never know that's all I'm gonna say about that this is one that's still up in the air um, always seeing these pencil beams on base reflectivity never showing up on the news as you can see there and you can see the actual stations right here um, each one of these is pretty darn accurate so wonder if that ever loaded up just just not gonna behave for me today are you unfortunate I'm live it's uh, of course it's gonna act stupid but regardless it works I was using it earlier today um, their websites probably overloaded not even a single image I hate you moving along so anyway you can scroll through all the different stuff see base velocity storm uh, relative velocity but all the way down here at the bottom general status message this will show you um, what mode the next rads are currently operating in and all that sort of stuff so flip through these hit create graph um, it's not going to load a damn thing so it's going to tell you to enter your email address and then put in the time that you want and the order of the data it's free and that's how you get to nextrad level three data so if you're really nosy and you really want to know about that sort of thing feel free to do that um i'm not going to go digging through that much anytime soon um and like i said i do have all the other doppler radars on here they're under pollution and privacy atmospheric sensors and you can see them Here's the joint surveillance system. Here's the integrated ocean observing system and the terminal Doppler weather radar here. And then that's all of the Doppler radars that are actually in America. So as you can see, it's more than just next rads out there. We don't get to see the data from the joint surveillance systems, FAA long range radars. And I haven't been able to find a reliable source for terminal Doppler weather radar. But regardless, if you look at hurricane pass, Generally speaking, it's almost impossible not to hit one of these damn things. Um, but that still doesn't mean they're necessarily steering the weather. Which brings us to our next topic. Um, so, Raphael O'Neill, you know, keep digging, girlfriend. Keep claiming you're special. But I've been looking at this next rat thing for better part of seven years. And... I still haven't found anything that I would call concrete evidence that they are steering something so powerful when they've only got 750 kilowatts to work with and you know their radar ranges I don't know I mean maybe they could increase the rainfall in a, a hurricane but that's about it um, I'm not willing to go any further than that at this point now if anybody wants to prove me wrong leave me comments leave me um, an email, jim at climateviewer.com. Love to hear from you. I'll take, you know, I'll take a look at it. So on to the next topic, and that's accidental geoengineering. So I put out this video uh, on, uh, what day was it? October 12th, and it's called Hands Off Mother Earth Manifesto, a Permanent Ban on Geoengineering. And basically... The ETC group, Friends of the Earth, Biofuel Watch, Climate Justice Alliance, and La Viva, La Via Campanina, um, you know, 110 civic civil societies, um, organizations, and popular movements demand immediate stop to geoengineering. And uh, you can see that they call for a ban on all geoengineering field experiments. Um, including Scopex, ICE 911, 
um, the marine cloud brightening project and the Oceanios Ocean Fertilization Project in Chile. So they named four geoengineering projects. Now everybody would say, well, what about the geoengineering we, we see over our head? Um, if you look at their manifesto, and it's right here, they put the, this joint statement out talking about you know how they're going to ban, ban geoengineering they're talking about the geoengineering that the you know the think tanks the you know illuminated ones um that they're gonna propose in the future or are testing right now and they differentiate that from what is called accidental geoengineering so accidental geoengineering is ship tracks and contrail series so if you talk to any scientist and you tell them i see geoengineering over my house they'll say bullshit if you call them chemtrails they'll call you a retard in this hands off mother earth manifesto i actually emailed um pat mooney and jim thomas Ribia, um sylvia ribiero you know, because I've talked to these guys from ETC group before. And I told them, I said, you know, why why are you not talking about the geoengineering we're seeing overhead? And when I talked to Jim Thomas on the phone, I said, have you even heard of the access flights or the ND max flights where they're using biofuels for contrail control and how they're trying to use the clouds that these planes are making to cool the planet? That is geoengineering. And he was like, wow, I'd be very interested to hear about that. Well, I wrote him a lengthy email, crickets, like no response. Big surprise, right? Um, but regardless, you can read all about this in accidental geoengineering with ship tracks and contrails. And beyond a shadow of a doubt, that's exactly what's going on. So ship tracks, we're about to kill a massive accidental experiment in reducing global warming and what do they mean by ship tracks uh, they mean this right here let me scroll up turn this on and scroll in these are ship tracks as you can clearly see here that's what a ship track looks like they make the chemtrails over your house look tiny um, they are hundreds and thousands of miles long and they turn into what's called marine stratocumulus Whereas the clouds you see over your house coming from planes, they turn into cirrus clouds. So it's a serious issue. And people, you know, don't really understand anything about ship tracks. You can see more of them right here. Um, that they're, you know, fanning out and covering the whole Pacific Ocean. Well, MIT was pretty upset because they were talking about banning bunker fuel. And bunker fuel is high sulfur fuel that runs these international ships and you can see that right there a forthcoming un regulation will slash shipping industry pollution but may also speed up climate change so what about airplanes oh how about that smithsonian magazine airplane contrails may be creating accidental geoengineering so the truth of the matter is this, that this is all a word game. So if it's, if, it, if it's pollution, even though it's geoengineering, it's accidental geoengineering. And unless it's intentional geoengineering, like what David Keith and Ken Caldera and them are talking about, then it doesn't count. Um, put your tinfoil hat on, shut up. So, that's really why I take offense to all of this stuff. Um, it's, you know, it's really tacky, you know, that they are really splitting hairs at this point because accidental or not, it is intentional now. Once they have made a decision to take airplane contrails and then use biofuels for contrail control to make more cooling clouds and less warming clouds to do cirrus cloud seeding and thinning 
to control these clouds so that they can control the radiation balance of the planet that's intentional it's not accidental any longer even if it was accidental for the last 60 years it isn't anymore so that's really my point is that accident or not um you know i talk about the 10 technologies to control the weather and you know you can see the note at the bottom you know um considered inadvertent accidental or pollution ship tracks contrail induced serious water vapor pollution eight nine and ten in red and the reason why is because hey you know it was pollution for 40 years but now we're starting to see that these can cool the planet during the day, but may trap heat at night. So for as long as we can get rid of that at night part, then we can cool the planet with these. So we're going to turn pollution into a geoengineering solution. But you're a tin full wearing crackpot head um, if you ever you know say anything about it. So this is all just a freaking ruse in my opinion you know they they're really not being forthright um and they're they're certainly not telling the truth about accidental geoengineering um i had originally written this article accidental geoengineering over on uh, climate x mit.edu and it was the number one most shared article on their entire freaking site uh, they have since deleted it. Page not found. Um, MIT kicked me and Dr. Rick Shankman off of there, um, deleted all of our articles, and um, <laughs> apparently the truth is not welcome on MIT's website. Um, it was up for several, for three or four months before just all of a sudden they got a new web developer and uh it all disappeared so you know they don't want to talk about the truth they certainly don't want to talk about ship tracks um you know and the the real plan so please read this article accidental geoengineering with ship tracks and contrails it'll really nail it home for you arm you with some details that you're not going to find anywhere else um about bunker fuel and how ameg the Arctic Methane Emergency Group said the regulation to ban bunker fuel for ships should be relaxed while encouraged continued use of bunker fuel where the resulting aerosol emissions might be beneficial because ship bunker fuel makes clouds and clouds cool the planet and that's a good thing. And uh, John Neeson from AMEG also said, we suggest that the G20 should initiate an international project with the Manhattan Project's focus and intensity. The new Manhattan Project. Geoengineering with ship tracks and contrails. That's accidental geoengineering my ass. So if you, if you really look into this stuff, guys, what you're going to realize is um, I mean, even the guys that were talking about banning geoengineering ETC group, I got crickets whenever I, I sent them an email and I, you know, referenced the hell out of it. Hey, look, you know, NASA's flying these tests with biofuels. They're testing some that are ultra low sulfur. They're testing others that are doped with sulfur. Here's 40, you know, references from geoengineers saying, let's put sulfur in jet fuel to cool the planet. Here's Ulrich Schumann saying, less warming, more cooling contrails. Here's the director of the FAA saying, we want to make clouds by day, none by night. Right there, less, right there on the screen. Less warming, more cooling contrails. Predictable for operational planning. Um... You know, in the accidental geoengineering, and there's all the quotes, you know, that's dissolved and suspended in their jet fuel and later burned with the fuel. Addition of sulfur to the fuel. You know, stratospheric sulfate injections from commercial aircraft with fuel sulfur content. So, this is what, what real geoengineering looks like today. And finally, we have... You know, the the good doctor over at the FAA, we would like to make more contrail-induced cirrus clouds during the day and none during the night. 
And then climate change and geoengineering, artificially cooling the planet by planet Earth by thinning cirrus clouds. And they talked about, you know, achieving this by seeding cirrus clouds during high latitude winters or nighttime seeding. So totally crazy stuff. Jet biofuel enlisted for contrail control. Um, like I said, this is no joke. This was dated 2013 before I even went to the EPA um, to give my speech. And that's where we're at. They are trying to control these clouds so they can get a desired result. That is geoengineering. And even the guys that are talking about banning geoengineering, ETC Group, Hands Off Mother Earth, Friends of the Earth, Biofuel Watch, they won't touch this with a 10-foot pole. So if you really want to know the real story, you got to dig into that. Come check out the 10 technologies to own the weather today and my solution, the Environmental Modification Accountability Act. Because the bottom line is, we really do need transparency, and we're not going to get it anytime soon unless people really start to understand that, you know, there is a lot of atmospheric experimentation without notification. And we're not told about any of this stuff. So whether it's, you know, next rad screwing with the weather, solar powered satellites, people dumping chemicals, um, you know, accidental geoengineering, accidental my ass. Um, I'm tired of, you know, having to deal with this, you know, issue of intent. And the only way to hammer it home is with some real legislation to give the Environmental Modification uh, Convention of 1978 the Weather Warfare Ban some teeth and a way to actually verify whether people are screwing with the weather or not. Um, so that's, that's the, the, you know, the end of the story guys. Um, I hope that you guys will continue to support my work. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, fakers out there and fear porn artists that are, you know, just basically pushing stuff to make a buck. I do everything I do and I reference it so that we can try to push this ball forward and, and actually make a difference with some credible evidence. And there are so many people making incredible statements that I hope that you will continue to support me on patreon.com slash climate viewer or hit me up on PayPal or GoFundMe. I would greatly appreciate it. But I'm gonna continue to, you know, slowly whittle away at this Trojan horse of accidental geoengineering till every scientist understands this is no longer an accident. When people are intentionally designing fuels, um, intentionally altering fuel sulfur content for a desired result, that this is the fossil fuel industry greenwashing its way out of its dirty mess it's made over our houses. It is geoengineering, whether it's accidental or not, at least they have admitted it is geoengineering. So let's hope that we can make some, you know, progress and hopefully, you know, get to a point where you know, we can get some legislation on the books. And my legislation can be found at climateviewer.com slash nmod, E-N-M-O-D. Um, please look it over and, you know, help me make this a reality. So with that being said, I hope that you guys have found this video informative. I know it was rather lengthy, but, you know, it takes a little while to get, you know, all the facts out there. And I could do this another three hours. In fact, I hope to one day. Um, so what I'm looking to do is maybe once a month do a question and answer, or, you know, just completely open form um, format uh, conversation with you guys. Um, and we'll probably do that in my Discord chat. So if you guys want to join the chat, um, links are at the top of climateviewer.com and um, they're also on climateviewer.org. And go join the Discord chat. I'll probably do it through there um, where people jump in the audio channel and can ask questions live we'll record it all put it on youtube um but i'd love to you know directly be able to answer some questions and just have a conversation rather than me preaching the same old tune um so look forward to that in the near future um i appreciate everybody who's been supporting me over the years and i appreciate even the haters because you guys constantly challenge me and, uh, you know, that, you know, moves me in a new direction to dig a little deeper. And the next right thing, I'm, I'm always going to be looking for evidence on that. But, you know, as of now, 
that's still one that's up in the air. And I mean way up in the air. Look for satellites in space um, to be steering hurricanes. Probably not X-Rats. So love you, mean it. And uh, remember, everybody, uh, information is powerful. And with power comes great responsibility. So please remember to attack ideas, not people.